Today our scripture is Mark 1, uh, verses 1 through 8, if you care to follow along. Um, I'm going to be reading from today's New International Version. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare the way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, wore a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one, the one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we get to know each other, I should let you all know that I love John the Baptist, or, or John the Baptizer, as, as Mark calls him. I love his weirdness, camel hair, eating locusts and honey. It's good stuff. Living out in the middle of nowhere, people come out looking for him. I just, I love the story. And when they find him, he says, repent, change your ways, get ready. I love that too. Now, the other side of you guys getting to know me is I may love repentance, a little bit too much. I have a certain critical nature. Um, it has me always looking for ways to improve. My personality type is often said to make a great coach because of that, because I'm always looking for ways to do it just a little bit better. Now that can be pretty annoying if you live with me. Just ask Lauren and Eli. I mean, Jasper might even have something to say about it. Uh, and that's part of why I relate to, to John. I want to make things better. I want to change habits and thoughts that get in the way of the bigger things that we're committed to. But who would really want to live with John? Am I right? At some point, a constant focus on change and improvement is exhausting and unhealthy. I think it might be part of why uh, John doesn't really show up much after this story in the Gospels. The eight verses we just heard of Mark's Gospels it's the start of his story. And he says right at the beginning, this is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Son of God. The word translating gospel, translated gospel, it might also say good news depending on your translation, is a Greek word, evangelion. And it was used both in this general sense to talk about good news, but it was also used to talk about special beginnings very specific proclamations of good news, like a proclamation from one of the Roman uh, emperors or governors of the time. Mark's writing is good news. He's telling the story of good news. It's the start of good news. And it starts with repentance. It starts with being dunked in the wilderness by a weirdo. <clears throat> And this is the beginning of the good news, at least as Mark tells it. Now, when I, talk, when I talk about the good news to someone or the gospel of Jesus, I speak about it in a little different order. My telling ha that has changed and evolved over my years as a Christian goes a little like this. First, God loves you very much. There is nothing you can do or nothing you have done that will make God love you less. And there is nothing you can do or have done that will make God love you more. God's love is powerful and unchanging. And God has something better for you. God has something more beautiful and more joyful and more wonderful for you than the small ideas that you have in your head. 
So I have this tendency to put the repentance second, especially when I want to tell something, I tell someone the good news as a start. In many ways, I think this is how Jesus preaches. He reaches out to those outside of the church and tells them, God loves you. Some people may have told you that you are outside of God's love because of your disease or your bad choices or your career, but you are not. And Jesus says, I want to eat dinner with you. I want to heal you. I want to welcome you into God's love. And then Jesus shows up at church and he says, you all need to get right with God. He shows up and he, and he demands more. He demands the repentance of the religious people. But here's the thing I want to say today. Repentance isn't about you being bad because God loves you. Repentance is about you making choices that are led by fear. We choose things because of our self-righteous anger. And we choose things because we think we're better than other people. Repentance isn't about a list of clean and unclean activities. Repentance is about a turning of heart, a maturing of motivations. Repentance is realizing that the racist thoughts that live in all of our heads don't only hurt people of color, but they also hurt us. We will grow and gain something by repenting of the racism that we've grown up with. We will be opened to deeper relationship when we repent. We will let go of fear and we will grow closer to God. Repentance isn't about giving something up like alcohol or chocolate or soap operas or Facebook. It's about making way for God's goodness making way for something better in our lives. Often we cling to the thing that is in the way of God's revelation. We cling to food or social media or our anger. But I'm telling you, God has something better. And that's the call to repentance. So here we start our journey towards Jesus with John calling us to repent of these lesser fear-based ideas and take this good and beautiful thing that God is offering in the wilderness from a weirdo. Amen. <laughs>